Conclusion and Examples of the Rectangular Metal Waveguide. The purpose of this video is to bring to a conclusion all of the discussion we've been having on the Rectangular Metal Waveguide. So I have some concluding remarks and summaries for you, and then I'll step through an example that I think will drive home some of these concepts we've been talking about. Let's first review what a rectangular metal waveguide is. Well, it forms a rectangle, so there's conductive metal forming a rectangle, and inside here is some medium that has a permeability mu and a permittivity epsilon. Then the dimensions of that guide, and I want to point out, it's really the inside dimensions. If this metal has any thickness, the A and B is not talking about the outside dimensions. It's talking about the inside dimensions. So it'll have a B dimension and an A dimension, and it's convention to have A greater than B. So if B was ever greater than A, then just rotate your problem 90 degrees, then you have A greater than B to stick with the convention. And on the right here is a very typical metal waveguide that you'd find sitting around in a lab somewhere. Let's just review some notes that we've talked about before on the rectangular metal waveguide. The first thing, this is probably the classic waveguide example. It's likely the first waveguide talked about in any textbook, and that's because it's pretty easy to analyze. It demonstrates almost all of the properties that a waveguide could demonstrate. And I like teaching this after the parallel plate waveguide because the analysis is very much like doing two parallel plate waveguide derivations at the same time. Also, the rectangular metal waveguide was some of the first ever waveguides used for microwaves. For lower frequencies, we tend to use transmission lines, and at some point, I'll call it, I don't know, in the 5 to 10 gigahertz kind of range, uh, the transmission lines become less efficient for distance, and the waveguides become the more efficient way to pipe things. The rectangular metal waveguide is not a transmission line because it has only one conductor. Don't mistake that having four sides as being multiple conductors. It's all one conductor, so it is not a transmission line. It does not support a TEM mode. It has a, or usually has a homogeneous fill. That's sort of one condition, but the other condition is it has to be a transmission line. Two or more conductors to support the TEM mode. And the other thing is all of the modes in the rectangular waveguide exhibit cutoff frequencies, right? A transmission line, the fundamental mode has no cutoff frequency. That goes all the way down to DC. But a rectangular metal waveguide, there is a certain frequency below which all of the modes are cut off. We did the TM analysis first, and at the upper left are all of the field components, the functions throughout the waveguide, and TM being transverse magnetic, we set the Z component of the magnetic field to zero, so this reduced to just solving a single differential equation to calculate the Z component of the electric field. So we obtained this solution in blue, and then from there, we substituted into our equations to get all of the other field components. Out of that analysis came an equation to calculate the phase constant of the guided modes, and here the guided modes have indices M and N. And we have the same exact equation for both TE and TM modes. The cutoff frequency, we have a similar looking equation. This is also the same equation for both TE and TM modes. And we had an expression for calculating the characteristic impedance. Now for this waveguide, for this mode, the TM modes, we cannot have M or N being zero. So anything with a zero in it are not guided modes. TM00, TM01, 02, TM050 is not a guided mode. So neither M or N can be zero. So we found for the TM modes that the TM11 was the lowest order TM mode. And by that, I mean this mode had the lowest cutoff frequency. This is a nice summary of everything that happened when we did the TE analysis of the metal waveguide. So all six field components are summarized here at the upper left. And what I have in blue are what we calculated first. Since this is the TE mode, the transverse electric mode, 
that means the longitudinal component of the electric field must be zero. So we only have a Z component of the magnetic field. So we solved a single differential equation to calculate the HZ component. And then we had equations we could plug that into to calculate all of the other field components. Out of this analysis came the phase constant as a function of the mode indices M and N. The cutoff frequency of those modes we, we would identify as M and N. And then the characteristic impedance. Now, interestingly, the phase constant and the cutoff frequency, the equations are the same for TE and TM. Uh, whether it's the TE or TM, the convention is the A dimension will be greater than B, and it will be filled with some mu and epsilon. And the A and B dimensions are the inside dimensions of the waveguide, not the outside dimensions. For TE, we found that the TE00 mode does not exist because we can't have both of those indices being zero. And the lowest order mode is the TE10. Here's a nice summary of all of the equations we derived and some we didn't even derive, but they're all summarized here and various different parameters that we could calculate and both for the TE and the TM modes and also a summary of what's allowed with the indices M and N. We would like to identify the overall lowest frequency mode, and this is what we will call the fundamental mode. We've been through a TE analysis, we've been through a TM analysis, and we discovered that they have the same equation for cutoff frequency. And so really, we can just look at the indices, and whichever has the lowest indices is going to have the lowest cutoff frequency. When we do that, we determine it is the TE10 mode that has the lowest cutoff frequency. Therefore, it is the TE10 mode that is the fundamental mode of the waveguide. So if we operate a rectangular waveguide and we shrink the size down so that it is single moded and only supports a single mode, that single mode will be the TE10 mode. And we call this the dominant mode. Let's end this with some key points about the rectangular metal waveguide, having been through all of the analysis. Well, the first thing is it's not a transmission line because it only has one conductor. To be a transmission line, we need two or more conductors. There are also all dielectric waveguides. None of those can be transmission lines because they don't have any conductors. When we have a metal rectangular waveguide, and the fill, the material inside the waveguide is completely homogeneous. That waveguide will support TE and TM modes, but it will never support a TEM mode because it is not a transmission line. The cutoff frequencies for TE and TM have the same equation. So if we have the same indices, so the TE22 and TM22, those modes will have the same cutoff frequency. So the cutoff frequency depends really only on these indices and not the actual mode itself. The TE00 mode does not exist. The TM, if we think of what the indices can be, we can't have either one of these be zero. So of course the TM00 doesn't exist, but also TM01, 02, 03, and so on, or TM10, 20, 30, and so on. Neither of those indices can be zero. TE, it's only the case where they were both zero. That does not exist. We found that the TE10 is the overall fundamental mode or dominant mode. And that's because the TE10 doesn't exist. And the TM11, which is the lowest order for the TM modes, has a higher cutoff frequency. So the TE10 is the dominant mode and usually in practice the most important mode. We also saw that the phase velocity of modes in these rectangular metal waveguides can exceed the speed of light. And I kind of left you hanging on that one as a, as a mystery, although I did say nothing's actually exceeding the speed of light, but I did not explain that. And we'll actually cover that in a different video. Example. 
All right, let's do another example. Let's take a waveguide now that has a width of four centimeters and a height of two centimeters. And we ask the question, over what range of frequencies is this waveguide single mode? I have a little trick to show you here. We could sit down with a bunch of equations and work through this, but if you have access to a computer, there's actually a little bit easier way to do this. Here's what I like to do. I like to go to a computer, set up a for loop, a double for loop over M and N, and calculate all of the cutoff frequencies. From there, I will take that list and sort them in order of increasing frequency. And that tells me right away my fundamental mode, the very first order mode is the TE10 mode. In this case, the next is the TE20 mode. And in fact, the TMs don't even pop up until you know, the, the fourth or so mode. So we immediately see that the TE10 mode is the fundamental mode, and it has a cutoff frequency of 3.74 gigahertz. Well, the question was, over what range of frequencies is this single moded? Well, we just go on our table and find the next frequency. So it is single moded from 3.74 gigahertz up to 7.48 gigahertz. And in practice, that is where we would want to use our waveguide if we desire to use it as a single mode guide. So that's how we write our final answer. That's the range of frequencies that this particular waveguide is single moded. So we immediately see that the TE10 mode is the fundamental mode and it has a cutoff frequency of 3.74 gigahertz. Well, the question was over what range of frequencies is this single moded? Well, we just go on our table and find the next frequency. So it is single moded from 3.74 gigahertz up to 7.48 gigahertz. And in practice, that is where we would want to use our waveguide if we desire to use it as a single mode guide. So that's how we write our final answer. That's the range of frequencies that this particular waveguide is single moded. From the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for using EMPossible. I wanna create more videos and I wanna to continue to improve how electromagnetics and computation is taught online. To do that, it will really help me if you can like this video and subscribe to our channel. I also want you to know we have a lot more content that you may not be aware of. See everything we have to offer at eimpossible.net.